Hi guys, welcome back to another quick crochet tutorial. So today I'm going to be making rem and ram as it's been highly requested before. And also it's a thank you video for 6,000 subscribers. Just a huge thank you to those who have subscribed to me and have been keeping along with my videos. And now I'm going to quickly go over the supplies that I'll be using. I do have a video on all the supplies that I use, which will be linked down in the description box below. But quick brief overview, I am using a 3.5 millimeter hook for this video, as well as a tiny hook. The one I'm using right here is a 2.10 millimeter hook, which I use to weave in like yarn strands and stuff. As long as you have a tiny one, it's fine. We have a stitch marker and a bent tip yarn needle. Then I have a broken felt tip needle, which I use to like poke in all the ends of the doll. I will also be using these fabric pins fabric scissors as well as fabric glue which I use beacon 3-in-1 or the other name is Fabri-Tac. So for this tutorial I will be making both but I'll be starting off with rem first. I just want to say that if you want to make rem and ram go ahead and create both of the body parts at the same time because both of their body parts are the same except from the head onward. I also want to quickly mention that this tutorial requires the Niki hair tutorial pattern which is a pattern where I create hair strands as I will be using this pattern as as a reference in this tutorial to create not only the hair strands but also the accessory pieces as well unless you want to freehand your own parts which is totally fine as well i'm also using the little weeby base body doll which is also linked in the description box to create the dolls on so you have to look at the base body and reference it to my notes which will be provided for free on my ko-fi page to follow along with this tutorial this video is basically here for visual references but i'll have the written notes in my ko-fi page as well as the little weeby base body which is provided for free by Laura Tag, all in the description box below. So I just want to mention that this tutorial is not a step-by-step -step tutorial, it's just a simple color changing one. I will be creating the pieces and I will tell you which rounds I changed color in and that way you can see the visual references and follow along. And as I said before, the written parts are provided for free for this tutorial. And I'm not sure if any of you guys also know my progress vlog videos. I also have notes provided for those dolls as well, but they are for my monthly subscribers. And it's pretty much used the same way you can become a monthly subscriber and you can follow along with my written notes and see why I do the changes and also have the hair pattern and use that to create the dolls and follow along with the video. So for the colors that they both share, I'm going to be using black. Here is a white color. Here is this purple color called Amethyst from I Love This Yarn. And here I'm using the skin color Magnolia Way by Crafter Secret. And so the colors for REM, I will be using this soft blue color by I Love This Yarn. I will also be using pink by I Love This Yarn. And I'll be using the slightly darker blue called Clear Blue by Impeccable. And now for the colors that are unique to RAM will be pink by I Love This Yarn, Fire Red by I Love This Yarn. Also the color Amethyst as well for like her hair piece. So starting off this tutorial, I'll be creating both of the arms first. I am starting off rounds one to two in skin color, which is Magnolia Way. After rounds two, we are changing the colors to white and do round three in white yarn. Then we're gonna go ahead and change to the color black yarn. On round four, do back loop only in black. For rounds five and six, do regular single crochet in black. And this is what the arm currently looks like. I am leaving my skin yarn right here because I will now be changing out the color to skin yarn. For round seven, I am doing it in skin color and around eight as well. For round eight, I am going to be closing it up just like so, soon crocheting across the top and then leaving enough of a tail to sew on. And once you are done with that, you should go ahead and create two. Both arms are the same. That's what they look like. Next up, we are creating the skirt. Take your black yarn and for round one, chain 28, then join it. And then we are going to single crochet all the way around. And here's what it looks like after I finish round one. For round two, do one half double crochet and then one half double crochet increase in the next stitch. For the last stitch, you will end on one half double crochet. So it does end unevenly. And now we are going to change out the last stitch 
to white just like so and then for round three I'm going to be doing back loop only starting off the first one with one slip stitch followed by one single crochet and then one slip stitch in the same stitch so that is all on one stitch right there doing back loop only the next stitch I'll be doing one slip stitch and then I'm repeating the same process going back to the first one so doing one slip stitch in the next stitch one single crochet and then one more slip stitch in the same stitch and then doing one slip stitch in the next stitch moving on to the next stitch one slip stitch a single crochet a slip stitch and it repeats in an ABAB a, B pattern all the way to the end and then you're going to close it okay so here's what it looks like when the skirt is finished all the way around and closed I am leaving this little part here just because it helps me attach it on to the doll later on and then for this next part you can see like how smooth like the edges are when you do back loop only and that's why I like to do that when it comes to making smoother edges and stuff so the next part I'm going to take my fabric glue and I'm going to put some glue just right above like the edges right here just a little bit of glue at a time so that way I can place on my white yarn which creates the white outline of the skirt and I'm just simply going to press that down pretty much like that and you want to leave enough room so that way there's like a little bit of black space right here you don't want to like cover it all up so just go a little bit at a time then press down the yarn and I think this method is a lot faster than sewing on the white yarn because that's what I probably would have done months ago if I were to create this doll but now it's so much easier to just glue it on and I think it looks a lot neater as well rather than sewing it on so this is actually one of my more favorite things to do now for the details like this and just go ahead and glue it all the way around we'll be right back and so here is what the completed skirt looks like with the white outline completely glued on around next we are creating the back flaps that's what I'm gonna be calling it I am simply referencing from my Niki hair tutorial pattern both of these are 12 chain two together in black yarn and then after that you want to create two of these little four chains in amethyst or purple yarn so now you want to take the 12 chain two together this is the front side right here with the stitches along the front I'm going to flip this to the back side and then take my four chain and then glue it on the bottom part right here take some fabric glue and then glue that the other side is pretty much going to be the same thing along the bottom end just like that so just go ahead and glue it down okay so now that both of my flaps are properly glued down we're going to go ahead and turn it to the front side here is some white yarn I'm going to do this for both of them starting along the inner edges right here put some glue right there just a little bit and then go downwards so we're gonna do pretty much the same thing as we did with a skirt and glue on the white outline details Okay, so here's the front of what it looks like when both of the back flaps are finished we have the white outline that goes along the front edges while still leaving some black space on the side and then on the back side we have two of the little purple four chains glued at the very bottom of the 12 chain two together okay so for the next part we're going to create the front circle and I'm using white yarn this is basically going to be placed on the front of the maid outfit so first off we are going to go ahead and chain six next we are going to skip two chains and do three half double crochets here is a one two and followed by 
three half double crochets and then two half double crochets in the next stitch and there is the first row now we are going to chain two turn it around and do let's see one half double crochet in the next stitch another half double crochet in the next stitch another half double crochet in the next stitch and then another half double crochet in the next stitch for the final one go ahead and do two half double crochet in the same stitch and so here's what it looks like with two rows now I'm going to chain one cut it off and then just weave it in this is what I like to do rather than using the yarn needle for this So there you go, that's the back side. Here is the front side, just like that. And now we're going to take black yarn. Here's my black yarn. We're going to go ahead and create another outline using fabric glue. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my glue, starting off the corner right here. And then all the way up here like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and place it on the yarn. And just like that, it creates like this little U. Take the scissors, snip this part off. And there you have it, this piece is finished. Okay, so for the next part, I'm calling these the flaps on the front circle. I'm creating two of them in black yarn. These are little four chains, so I got two of them going on. And these will be used for the front side, like the details of the outfit. So I'm just making this in advance. Next, we'll be creating the shoulder sleeves. I'm going to be going ahead and creating two of them with white yarn. So I'm making a slip knot right here. And then I'm going to chain nine. Two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. So these are going to be like little removable sleeves since both of their sleeves are kind of like ruffles and they kind of stand off along the shoulders. So now we're going to do one slip stitch and in the next stitch we're doing one half double crochet and then one slip stitch inside the same stitch. So this also repeats. The next stitch we are doing one slip stitch and in the next stitch one half double crochet and one slip stitch in the same stitch. Here we go again. The next stitch one slip stitch. Next stitch one half double crochet followed by one slip stitch in the same stitch. And one slip stitch in the next stitch, a half double crochet, followed by one slip stitch. And then I'm going to chain one to close it off. Cut this part off. Then I'm going to go ahead and weave in my ends as usual. Cut off the excess. Then we're gonna go ahead and repeat this again one more time for the other arm sleeve. Okay, so here are both of my shoulder sleeves that are completely finished. This is the front side and here is the back side. And now just a quick recap on all the pieces that we've made so far. First thing we started off with are the couple of pair of arms. And here is the little skirt. We created the back flaps right here. Also created this front circle and these are going to be the little flaps along the front circle. Then we created shoulder straps 
right here. So these are pretty much overview of what the accessories we've created so far. Now we are moving on to creating the leg and making the body. Now I'm going to be creating the leg, starting off with her shoes. I'm doing rounds one to three in black, and then I'm changing out the color to white on the last stitch. For rounds four, go ahead and do back loop only, single crochet all the way around. Doing back loop only here will give you a nice smoother edge, so that's why I'm doing that this way. Okay, so I just finished doing rounds five in white, but before I move on, I just want to let you know that from this part right here, we have the black yarn still hanging out. So what I'm going to do is cut a bit of it off, like leaving a little bit of a tail there. Now we're going to take our yarn needle, put it through. Okay, so here's what it looks like on one side of the leg. So here is the end of the round. I'm gonna take my yarn needle. So this is one, two, three. We're gonna put our yarn needle through that third stitch right above the black part right here. So pretty much in between is round three and four. And then we're gonna pull the yarn through just like that. So from here, we have this little tail hanging out on the side of the shoe. We're just going to leave that there until we finish the leg completely. So go ahead and finish off the legs up to round nine with white. Okay, so now that the first leg is finished, I closed it off and I also partially stuffed the leg as well. So now with the remaining yarn strand, we are taking our yarn needle and then we're going to turn it to the back side and count from here. So here is where the stitch ends and we're going to count from here. One, two, three, four five and on this fifth one right here i'm going to put my yarn needle through like this slide it up this way pull up the yarn strand just like this so here's what it looks like on the front side i'm going to tighten it up and then it looks like a little shoe strap so now what i'm gonna do with the rest of this is take this yarn needle and then do the same thing again Hook it through that fifth stitch, pull through. That way we can secure it and it doesn't come off. And then now go back in and then poke this upwards. Pull the yarn through just like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and tuck this one into the leg, the rest of the yarn in there. Just like that. There you go. So you have the little sandal looking thing. And now do the exact same thing for the second leg. Just don't cut it off because we're obviously going to join it. Okay, so now I've created both of the legs and joined them together. You'll want to do rounds 10 through 12 in white. And then at the very end, go ahead and change it out to the color black. After that, you want to do rounds 13 in black. And I also left this little bit of white strand right here just so I can close up the gaps that are in between the legs. So here's the little gap on the bottom part. I'm just going to go ahead and just weave it in back and forth. And then until the gap closes at the bottom and then just simply tuck this inside one of the legs. So here we go. Next, we're going to work on rounds 14, and this is the round where I will take my skirt and I will simply join on top. So we have the skirt at the bottom. Simply put the legs through the skirt, just like this. It goes all the way to the top part right here. So here's the little tail of the skirt that I was holding out earlier. I like to just put this one along the edge right here. Not sure if you can see that, but this is where I know where to begin on the stitch. Now I'm going to grab my stitch marker put it on the loop in place. I mean, the skirt can be placed on in any direction. It's not a big deal because they're all the same all the way around, but I want like the back side to be on the back. So if you can't see, just put like your hook through one of the stitches along the skirt, flip this upside down, and then you can like look at, pull this open and then like find the next stitch, put your hook through. And then single crochet all the way around until you have a total of 27 stitches. So I'll meet you guys back. And here's what it looks like with the skirt attached on round 14. The back side. And there we go. 
And now for rounds 15 through 17 will be all in black. This is what it looks like so far. Then we're going to go ahead and change out the last stitch to white yarn. And now for rounds 18, do back loop only in white. Just follow the same instructions as on the little weeby pattern. It's like two single crochet and one invisible decrease. So just do the same thing, back loop only. And then 19 is all regular single crochet in white. And now for the last stitch, we're going to switch out the colors to your skin color. Now for round 20, we're going to do regular single crochet in skin color. And then for the last stitch, we're going to switch it out to white again. And then do rounds 21 and 22 all in white. And I also recommend doing round 22 with really, really tight stitches so that way the neck could be like more stable and in place. After that, you're going to want to do rounds 23 and the rest of the head in skin color. Starting from this point, do rounds 23 and stop at round 30. And then we're going to go ahead and put in the eyes for Rem. Okay, so here's what it looks like with the head all finished up to round 30 in skin color. I'll now be taking my 12 millimeter eye and then placing it on this side. And so just like that, make sure it lines up with this leg right here. So you can see the eye lines up with this leg at the bottom part. So that's how you know it's like in the right place. Now I'm going to be taking my clear blue yarn to create the color of the iris. I'm going to start off by putting this one right here back in. Now taking my black yarn to create the upper lid, starting off with the corner, we're going to create rounded corner eyes. And here is one stitch next to that. Simply place it down like this. Just like that. There's her eye. Here's my washer. Place it on the back side. Now I'm going to snip off the excess. We will now secure on the eyelid. Flip the doll upside down. Use my broken felt tip needle to apply the glue on the upper lid. And there you have it. One eye is done. And I'm not putting on the other eye just because I think her hair is going to be covering that part. So there's no need to use another safety eye. And now for the rest of this, from rounds 31 to the rest of the head, finish it off and stuff the head as you go according to the pattern. And I will be right back. And here's what the head looks like when it's completed. We have this nice one eye doll. What it looks like all the way around. And here's what your doll should look like overall so far. Just like this. And for those who are also doing RAM at the same time, I'll insert another clip of me creating the rest of the head for RAM right here. Okay, so now I have the doll ready for RAM. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in one safety eye on this side over here. Turn the doll up this way and see if the eye aligns with this leg. And I think it does good enough. I'm taking a red yarn and my yarn needle. I'm going to go ahead and create the color of the iris. Now we're going to create the top of the eyelid. Whoops. Pretty much the same way as we did with Rem but just on the opposite side. Now I generally don't use red for the iris because it tends to make characters, <laughs> at least my doll looks kind of mean, but I feel like, you know, her eye is red and she only has like one eye. So I'm gonna try to see what this looks like on her when it's done, but I feel like the red eye is pretty important detail for this doll. So Ram is going to have a red eye. Now take the red yarn, give that a slight tug so it stays in place. Now here we go again, gluing down the eyelid. And there you go, her eyes finished and go ahead and finish off her head the same way as the rest of the little weeby pattern. 
and I'll be right back to finish off Rem. Okay, so now we're back with Rem's body. Go ahead and attach on both of her arms. You can also do this with Ram's body as well, attaching it on round 20. As according to pattern, I have a long tail, so I had to sew mine on. So you can go ahead and sew on yours as well. And here's what it looks like so far. And we are now going to move on to the next step. So now moving on to the next step, we want to take our two back flaps, the 12 chain two together. First off, we're going to turn the doll to the back side. So on round 16, you can start off by counting right here on round 20, which is where the arm is. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. This is where we're going to put on these little flaps right here. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of adjustments here and there just so I can see that it will line up perfectly on the front. This part right here, we're gonna use fabric pins to put down the triangles into place. So I'm just gonna put like a couple of pins or something and make little adjustments as I see fit. So I'm putting it like at an angle right here because I want the tails to be visible on the side outside of their legs. So this is their legs and I want it to be visible on the front side. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side right here, something like this, and I'll probably make some adjustments as I go along. Just try to pin it down for now. And let's see what it looks like on the front side. So here it is on the front side. You can see the purple shows on the front and those are like the little flaps that I want to be visible. Going back, let me just adjust this to be a little bit higher. I'm trying to make them even as possible as well. And so far, you know what? I think this is pretty good. So go ahead and do this for Rem and Ram's body if you're working on both of them. For now, we're going to glue it down. So I'm gonna take a third pin, pin it down somewhere right here, and I'm gonna pull this one up. So lifting up this flap, I'm going to glue it down with my fabric glue. Just gonna flip it this way so I can see what I'm doing. and then place the pins back so that way it stays down. And do the same thing for the other side when you're happy with the placements. And I try to wanna make these little lines right here connect. That's why I'm also turning it a little bit so that way it can connect right here because the design connects to each other, if that makes sense. The lines are connected from the back side and all the way around to the front side as well. So I'm just gonna leave this flap here to dry. Now moving on to the next part, I'm going to be sewing on an X right here, pretty much on the back side because her design, there's this little cross on the back side to keep the dress intact. So I'm simply just going to freehand the X's as best as I can. I'm going to insert my black yarn right here into this last white stitch and then go all the way over here to where this arm is. So you see on this side right here, that's where it pokes up right above the arm and I'm going to pull this yarn through Then I'm going to insert my hook back in the same beginning stitch right here. Now I'm going to poke my hook, which is on this side right here, at the bottom. So that's already one side for the X, and now we're going to go again diagonally to the other arm. Snip off this excess yarn and then poke in the yarn. Taking my broken felt tip needle and just poke the excess inside of the doll. And so there's one more piece that I didn't mention at the beginning part. We actually have to make a simple bow. So I do have a tutorial video on how to create a simple bow, but I'll go ahead and quickly show you how to make it here. I am using a tiny hook, my 2.10 millimeter hook and my white yarn. So the first thing I'm doing is creating a slip knot. And then I'm putting this hook through just like this. Chain one. And here's what that looks like. Then we take the hook and put it directly into the slip knot, just like that. And then we pull up, we pull up a yarn. And right here you want to wriggle it, giving it some extra space right there. And then take your hook out and be careful to not undo the whole thing. So now we're going to twist these little flaps right here. And there you go, you can kind of see how it becomes a bow. So what I'm gonna do is basically glue it right here, just like that, and then like snip off the yarn. Well, I'm gonna snip off the yarn first. 
just try to make sure they're even something like that very easy quick way to create a bow now I'm just going to glue it along here just like that there you go just press down and we're good to go for the back side and that is what the back side looks like there we have it now we're working on the front side of rem and go ahead and do the same thing for ram as well if you are making both of them so first off i'm taking my front circle right here we're going to be gluing this piece on round 16 of the front part of the body and try to make sure it's like in the middle so if you remember the back side the back flaps were also glued on round 16 so this one is also going to be on round 16 kind of like this this doll requires a lot of gluing as you can tell also going to take my pin just to secure it in place and I kind of wish I had like shorter pins because my doll sometimes is too thin and the pins will poke through and I accidentally poke myself but yeah here it is so next we're taking our flaps on the front circles which are two of the four chains in black yarn assuming this part is dry because I'll be gluing it on top of the front circle this one's gonna be glued on round, I believe it's 15, which is on the black part right here. So here is the black yarn of the front circle. You wanna make sure the triangle is on the inside. And I'm just gonna quickly pin this down for now and do the same thing on the other side. It's also gonna be on the inside. So hopefully you guys are still able to follow along and that you like this pattern. This is my second time creating this doll. The first one I actually did Ram's body just to see if I could create this tutorial in the first place because it's really hard to wing a tutorial if I haven't practiced creating the doll in the first place. And I hope you like how the outfit design turned out. Just going to place another pin right here and wait for that to dry. So while I'm waiting for those pins to dry, I'm going to create another simple bow using black yarn. The same way, we're doing the slip knot, taking our tiny hook, chain one, and then pull up a yarn through the slip knot. This bow will be glued onto her neck to create that bow collar thing. Try to glue that in the middle. Now that this part is all dried, we're going to go on with the next step. So here we are taking white yarn and what I'm going to do is glue the white outline to create the rest of the details. So just watch how I do this. Starting right here, I'm going to be gluing the very top of this triangle piece and then gluing it down right here along the edges of the triangle. Also, when you come across on this side, you want to make sure you stop around round 16 for the gluing part. Now I'm going to apply on the white yarn directly over that so you can see I didn't put the white outline all the way to the top of the triangle so from here we're gonna connect this yarn all the way to the back where this yarn is of the back flap it's gonna be connected so I'm simply just going to put some glue on this side and even onto the yarn on the back the white yarn right there and now we're pretty much just going to connect the dots Snip this off. I just sort of like tap into place. <laughs> there it is. It wraps around to the front side. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side too for the front part. Okay, so here it is for the final part. Details along the side. The outline pretty much goes all the way around. Just gotta take out these pins, but yeah, they're pretty much done. For the final part, we have the little shoulder straps which we created earlier. And hopefully the ones you created following this pattern fits yours. If not, you can just um, create it again and tailor it to fit your doll's arms. If it doesn't fit, just make it longer following the same pattern. 
And what this does is simply go over the shoulders just like that. It's kind of like a removable item even though it's not really supposed to be removed. And it doesn't really go all the way around. It simply just wraps around the top part. So right here, there's just a little bit of space underneath where the armpit is. I just kind of have it down like that. Leave it like that. And it stays in place. So I do the same thing with the other arm as well. And there you go. That creates the little frilly sleeves that they both have on their outfits. And that is the completed look for the outfit. So I'm now going to go ahead and show you Rem and Ram side by side. I haven't even done their hairs yet, so I have no idea what I'm doing. Hopefully yours looks similar to this. Both of their outfits are identical and I really love that. It's so cool how their eyes are like on the opposite sides. So going back to Rem, we're now going to be making her hair cap as well as Ram's too. I created them both at the same time. For Rem, we have Soft Blue by All of This Yarn. We are creating four inner rounds and four outer rounds. For Ram, we are doing Four inner rounds and four outer rounds using pink from I Love This Yarn. So you can go ahead and create both of them if you are making both at the same time. So now I'm going to be putting on the hair cap for Rem. They have really short hair too, so I'm hoping this will be easy to do. So the way I place on hair caps, I count three rows above the eyes. So here is one, two, three, and the hair cap covers the fourth round. So now I'm going to be pinning this down right here. And I like to tug it along the back side just like that push this down on this side and pinning it down on all four sides you have the front back pinned and the sides as well are both pinned down and to secure on the hair cap I like to just glue down the back side of the hair cap lift this flap up and then just add a bit of glue. But you can make it more secure if you want by sewing down the hair cap to the head along the edges. But that's a lot of work, so I'm not gonna be doing that. But I do recommend it if you're giving the doll to a kid. Okay, so for this next part, I'm going to be creating one ear for Rem and one ear for Ram as well. So just go ahead and create two ears. I'm taking my skin yarn and my 3.5 millimeter hook and now I'm going to be doing three half double crochet inside of the magic ring. Then you're going to want to pull this closely together, but not all the way. So that way it creates half circle, which looks kind of like an ear. Then we're going to snip off this yarn right here. So there you go. It creates like this little ear. So here is my little ear piece. I'm putting it in the same direction as the eye. So here is the eye on this side, so the top part right here, from the eyelid where it ends. We're going to count one, two, three, four stitches, and then go down one row, which is this little stitch right here. That's where we're going to be putting on the ear on that fourth row. And there we go, she has one visible ear on this side where her eye is. I'm gonna keep the pin there just so it can continue to dry. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to create her hair pieces. So here's the first piece that I'm adding on. It's an eight chain using the same soft blue yarn. I am putting it on this very last round right here of the hair cap and I am putting it right next to the ear. So from the front view, you can still see the ear is still visible and it doesn't go below her ear, but it does go along the same level as her eye. So I really like this placement right here. Okay, so here is the placement for the hair. As I said before, I added the eight chain right here. I kind of curved it a little bit from the last update and then I'm adding on this one more eight chain that's also slightly slanted diagonally down this way and we have four more different strands right here these are all 10 chains i flip them upside down and i pinned them on this side try to make sure the length is pretty much around where the eye stops right here pretty much until it reaches the hair cap and i made sure all the smaller strands on the bottom touch together which creates her bangs so now moving on, we're going to go ahead and create the headband. Go ahead and take your black yarn and then do a chain of 22. Next, we're going to be skipping two stitches and then do half double crochet 
the entire way and I will be right back and here is what the headband strap looks like when it's all completed just a little strip now I'm gonna go ahead and try to place this on the head okay so here is the headband placed onto the head so this is what it looks like on the second to last round right here I am placing the headband on this side right here and then on the other side as well it's the second to last one that's the placement for that here it is from the top view you can see there's like a little bit of space from that row right here and I think that's fine the way it looks here is the back view of it there's the top view so hopefully you get the idea how I'm placing it on and that's simply gonna be glued down so now we're going to go ahead and try to finish off the rest of her hair. I'm going to be filling up this little gap right here. After placing on the headband, I guess I'll just place an eight chain right along the top part. On this side, I have another gap right here, so I'll be placing another eight chain as well. Now I'm going to try to work along the bottom edges right here. Originally, I thought that I didn't really need to fill up this part because the hair cap is already round and that pretty much creates the general shape of her hair. But her hair is like bob shaped and there's actually some volume on the side. So I'm going to be adding another layer on top just to give it some volume. Okay, so here's another quick update on the hair and what I am doing so far after I did all this on the front part. I am going ahead along the edges right here at the bottom. I'm using all eight chains for the rest of her hair. I placed one eight chain upright like this next to the ear and directly below this part of the headband, placing it down here just a little bit underneath the hair cap. You don't want it too long because it is a short hair. And then I'm using another eight chain in the opposite direction, place it down next to it. And then we do the same thing back and forth along the entire back part of the hair cap so you see this is like the hair cap right here it's barely going a little bit over the hair cap here's kind of what it looks like on the side profile right there really really short hair and here it is all the way around to the other side of the head same thing for this side barely just covering over the hair cap and I think this gives a nice little volume for the hair she has this space right here which i honestly kind of just want to skip this part and like not cover it but i think i will go ahead and fill it up with eight chains in just pretty much a random order you can fill it up however you want as long as it fits nicely like puzzle pieces but otherwise here's what it looks like on the front which you can't really tell anyways but it's nice to have like the entire head covered up if you wanted that otherwise i think you could leave it like this and that way you don't have to do as much work because like the side profile like this doesn't look that bad either same thing with this side when the doll is displayed on the front you won't really see anything i will be filling it up and in my notes it will have the hair count for all the hairs completing the entire head okay so here is the overall profile of the head so here is the back side and how i filled up the rest of the inner circle we do the same thing with the eight chains just going back and forth and filling it all up in rows and then the top part i filled up with three little eight chains to fill up that gap. And yeah, this is pretty much what it looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing this on and then we're gonna get back to finish off the headband with flowers. Okay, so this next part, I'm going to be creating the flowers on the headband, so the headband flowers. I'm taking my white yarn. We're gonna be doing a magic ring and then we're gonna go ahead and chain four. Then we're gonna do one slip stitch onto the base which creates like the first petal. Next, we're gonna go ahead and do it again, chain four. And then slip stitch to the base and do this two more times and then close off the flower. So it's gonna be like a four petal flower. <laughs> and so here I just made five pieces of flowers for her headband. This is what they all look like. There's only four petals just because I felt like there wasn't a need for more. And I'll show you how I'm going to be placing on these flowers later. Okay, so here is the head without all the pins. Removed everything and it looks so nice. I'm gonna go ahead and start on the headband now with these little four petal flowers. And I'm simply just going to be like rearranging them and pinning them down. So there will be like a little quick time lapse of this. Okay. 
Okay, so I think this actually worked out a lot better than I expected. I didn't think the flowers were actually going to fit on the headband like this nicely and evenly. It looks so good. For the hair clip on her bangs, I'm thinking about just taking my yarn and possibly gluing it down and creating the little X shape. Okay, so now we're gonna create the five petal bow. I am starting off with a magic ring and then I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six chains. And then we're gonna do a slip knot inside of the magic ring. And then do another six chains. Then do another slip stitch. And this process is going to repeat until you have five petals and I'll meet you back. Okay, so here is what my flower looks like after I created five petals. And it looks pretty scrunched up because I did pull the string to close up the magic circle. And look right here, I'm not really closing all the way because I kind of want to leave some space there. And to close the flower, since I didn't say it before, I'm not even sure if I'm doing this right, but I'm going to put my hook inside the magic circle and then like pull up a loop and then pull it through to create like a chain one. And then here I'm just going to cut off this part. So here's how I'm closing it. I'm not even sure if there's like the proper way or anything, but if it works, I think it's fine. Um, I'm going to take my tiny hook and then put the hook through one of like the first chains on the first petal just like simply put it through then I'm gonna take this loose strand and then like pull, pull it through the chain just like that insert my hook through some of these stitches and then back into the last stitch of the last petal put it through there pull up the yarn through And that is how I'm closing my flower, just like that. Damn, I should have made this string longer. I forgot there were like little ribbons at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is simply take another strand of yarn and we're gonna create those little ribbons and make it longer. And there we go, the flowers with the little ribbons going down. And so here are both of the flowers. After adjusting the little ribbon tails on the bottom, I created one for Ram and then Ram as well. One in pink and the other one in Amethyst. The one that's going on Rem will be the pink one. So now I'm gonna simply start gluing this down. I really like the placement of this one, so try to keep it there. Now we're gonna go ahead and do ram. Starting off with her head, I also added on the ear on the side where the eye is. And we're doing the same thing, counting four stitches from the eyeball and then one row down. That's where I placed on my ear. And now we're gonna be taking our soft pink yarn to create like similar amount of hair strands. Just simply reverse it, mirror it from rem. Okay, so now I'm back with the front part of the hair. It's pretty much the same thing, just the opposite side. I am adding one eight chain right here. Here is another eight chain right above it, the eyes. 
And then on this side, I'm also using four 10 chains right across. So you can see it's actually covering up the other eye, the area where the other eye is supposed to be. And so there we have it. Next, I'll be taking my black headband and I'm doing the exact same thing where I'm just placing it on the second round of the hair cap, pretty much down like this, pinning it down on both sides. Okay, so now the headband is glued on and in place. So same thing, placing it on the second to last round of the hair cap for both sides. I will now be taking my eight chains and filling it up across this empty space on the top right here, just as I did for Rem. Place it on something like that and it stays nicely intact. So as you can see here, now all we have to do is go back around and do the bottom part, the edges again. And there it is, everything is placed on. So I'm gonna be filling up the top part with eight chains for the rest of this as usual, as how we did with Rem. So there we go. Okay, so I'm back real quick and here is the update for the hair on the back side. All filled up with eight chains, similar ways. Um, the hair count might be different with Rem and Ram, but it's okay. It looks similar enough and I'm pretty happy with it so far. They're currently just pinned down, but I will now be adding on the little white flowers on top of the headband. So here they are. I have five of them ready. And I also have this little flower hair piece right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly figure this out, attach it on, make it even as possible and just pin it down for now. And I think something like this is close enough for now. So I'm going to place it and the flower is pretty much going to be on this side right here. Something like this, which will be placed on after I glue on all the hair strands. This is just kind of what it looks like for now. So I'll be right back. Hi guys, so at this point, I think we are done with the dolls. They are both completely finished and here's what they look like side by side. Hopefully yours turned out to be similar following this tutorial. And if you do follow this tutorial, please tag me on Instagram. So that way I can post it on my story, on my crochet Instagram page. And here is the overall look of both of the dolls, the front side, their outfits identical and their hairs mirrored with one being blue, the other one pink. I really love the way it turned out. And here is the back side for both of them. There we have it, something pretty similar. Hair as well. Tried to create them similar as I possibly could. This one has definitely taken me a long time to upload, but I'm finally done and hopefully you enjoyed it. I'm super tired right now. I'm gonna go edit this video and I'll be back with another video soon. Bye.